Welcome to an introduction to economics, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information on Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. This is our third short podcast on money. The base interest rate is set by the central bank, the Bank of England. Announcements are made for the start of each month. The Bank of England acts as the banker for the government and for the other banks. In the United States, the central bank is the Federal Reserve System. Central banks are used to conduct monetary policy. In the United Kingdom, the central bank used to be a private bank, but it was nationalized in 1948. The Bank of England is divided into two departments, the Issue Department and the Banking Department. The Issue Department is concerned with introducing new notes into circulation. To do this, it must buy financial securities. These are mainly bills and bonds issued by the government or by commercial firms. These securities represent assets for the Issue Department. The Banking Department acts as the banker for the government and other banks. The assets of the Banking Department are government securities and the loans made to other banks. The Bank of England is the only bank allowed to create new cash. This means it cannot go bankrupt. The money that is in circulation outside the banking system is a liability of the Bank of England. The deposits that are with commercial banks and building societies are a liability of those institutions. Together, the two sums make up the money supply. The monetary base is the currency which is supplied by the Bank of England to the banks and for private circulation. The money multiplier is the amount by which the money supplier su- supply is a multiple of the monetary base. The larger the money multiplier becomes, the smaller is the cash reserve ratio of the commercial banks. The larger the money supply, the smaller the private sector's desired ratio of cash to deposits. What are the factors that will affect the money multiplier? A commercial bank is required to maintain a reserve ratio. This is the ratio of cash reserves to deposits. If the reserve falls below this, then the bank has to borrow cash. When the central bank raises the reserve requirement, this will reduce the money supply. When banks need to borrow cash from the central bank, they pay interest at the discount rate. This discount rate has to be above the market interest rate. If it were not so, then banks would simply keep borrowing from the central bank. Keeping the discount rate above the market rate means there is a penalty for borrowing from the central bank. The money supply is affected by the open market operations of the central bank. If the central bank prints one million pounds in banknotes, then it buys bonds. There will now be fewer bonds on the market, but the monetary base has been increased by one million pounds. If the central bank sells bonds to the value of one million pounds, then the monetary base falls by one million pounds. Since the money supply equals monetary base times money multiplier, then this becomes an important channel for the central bank to be able to affect the money supply. The central bank is often referred to as the lender of last resort, able to lend to a commercial bank if a financial panic threatens. Since commercial banks are operating a fractional reserve, they are vulnerable to financial panic. The central bank serves as a guarantee that commercial banks can get cash. The central bank is the only bank that can print money. Banks are required to keep a minimum value of bank capital relative to outstanding loans and investments. If a bank makes a loss through worthless investments or loans that are defaulted, the shareholders are expected to meet the loss. If the loss is too large, the bank may go bankrupt. Whilst Bearings Bank was allowed to fold and be sold at a nominal price, the government stepped in when the Royal Bank of Scotland was under threat. The bank was rescued by the government buying a majority share in the bank. The money market equilibrium is where the quantity of real balances demanded and the quantity of real balances supplied are equal. The real money supply L is equal to the money supply M divided by price level P. 
At equilibrium, the demand schedule LL is shown for real money. The vertical line represents the supply curve. An equilibrium point E is reached at an interest rate R0. If the interest rate falls to R1, the demand increases to the point B. AB now represents the excess demand for money. How is an equilibrium to be restored? A real money and real bonds are equal to wealth, as is desired money and desired bonds. So real bonds less desired bonds must equal desired money less real money. An excess demand for money is met by an excess supply of bonds. So if there is an excess demand for money, then to make people want to hold bonds, the interest rate is raised back to R0. When bond supply matches bond demand again, there is equilibrium once more. Changes in equilibrium can result from a shift in money supply or money demand. A fall in the supply of money from L0 to L- dash means a rise in interest from R0 to R- dash, and a new equilibrium point E- dash is established. A rise in real income will result in a shift in the demand schedule from LL to LL dashed. To restore equilibrium, there will be a rise in interest rates to R double dash until a new equilibrium point E double dash is reached. Open market operations can determine the monetary base. The central bank can also set out a reserve requirement and control over the money multiplier. However, forcing banks to hold reserves they would not normally hold is rather like a tax on banks and makes it harder for them to do business. The main means of control for a central bank is now to control through raising and lowering interest rates. Suppose the money supply is at L0 and the equilibrium interest rate is R0. If the demand is at LL dashed, then the bank raises interest to R1, and the money supply is reduced to L1 dash. This ends our short podcast on money, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.